Okay, so there's so many pieces to this and I'm just gonna kinda go through some basics here. As to, I don't have all the answers, so uh, but some things that I've learned basically restoring clay fields on pinball. Um, most of the stuff is on the web. If any of you ever heard of uh, pinballrehab.com, that's actually a pretty decent site. They have a lot of good stuff. There's a gentleman by the name of Vid1900 that was on someplace, but he posted a really good article on a lot of the basics of what to do. You know what I mean? I've learned a lot from that, and also a gentleman by the name of Ken Meeting has taught me a lot of interesting things. He's been doing it for quite a while. But I guess I'll just kind of go through some of the basics of the steps that I do, or that you know you can do to to to, to do them because people will ask me questions like, what do I do with this insert? When do I do that? What do I do about this? You know, um, So let me kind of just brush through some of those things. So um, actually what I have here is a black hole play field that somebody has generously helped me with because mine is broke to hell. Um, the first thing is basically checking your inserts. Okay, so you have an insert, especially like the old valleys, you stick your fingers back here on them. And you know, do they pop out? Are they lifted? Are they kind of shrunk in, sunk in too far or anything like that? If that's the case, then you need to take the inserts out. Don't sand them or anything like that. Clean the hole real good. Put some epoxy around the edge and then epoxy it back in. How do you okay. pop them out? You, pop them out you can the pop them out from the back side. Yeah, typically um, I use like a socket or something like that that I can just kind of tap it out. Um, it depends on how old the machine is. If it's some of the newer ones, you may have to use like a heat gun and kind of heat the front and the back a little bit, you know, just to kind of make it come out, loosen the glue up a little bit. Um, but the first part is you really want to fix all the inserts. So I'll lay them down. You've heard things about people using a hammer. Don't use a hammer, just a block of wood. You can press it down nice and neat and get it flat. And then when you have your inserts flat and things like that, that's the first part of fixing that. Any kind of wood that you have broken, you know, if you have anything like that, I use like uh, just use like a epoxy wood putty. You can get them just about anywhere. Fix your areas, sand it, clean it up, get it nice and smooth. Um, and then pretty much once you have that stuff fixed, then you want to actually clear the play field. I'm not going to get into the details of clear coating. You can use like Verithane's, like a min wax. People use that, they brush it on. That's not a problem. Um, I use like an automotive clear. I have a, a spray gun and things like that, and I'll spray it down. The joy of doing that the first time when you do this is now you lock in all the wood, you lock in all the artwork. This thing looked like heck when it started out, and this is just one coat of clear on it. But now I can see, you already see it's got a nice shine to it. This is just one coat on it, just, just, just to cover, just to clean it up, lock everything in. And also it brings the artwork out like crazy. It just makes it look a lot better. Now I realize that it looked bad, but there's a whole lot less touch-ups I need to do on this. I just need to touch up things like this, and you know, there's some black that's kind of screwy and things like that. Um, so it, you realize there's a lot less work you have ahead of you when you do that, you know. Um, do you do clear first and do touch-ups on top of the clear? Correct. Correct. Put the clear on there first. Also, the great thing is you have a, a wonderful surface to work on now. And I'm not an artist in any way, shape, or form. I can tell you that right now. I can use a paintbrush. I can use an airbrush, things like that. But I, I'm not an artist. But if I screw it up, wipe it off, start over again. You like it? Then you can go ahead and I'll get into that a little bit. But then you can go ahead and continue on with your, put a nice coat of clear on it and do it. Like actually, just a trick that I like to do here, I'll show you real quick, is you know, you've got a play field and some people say you need to strip everything off the play field, take everything off the back of it. Good God, man, that drives me nuts. You know, you, that's a lot of work, <laughs> you know. Really what you need is the top of the play field. So what you can do is strip your parts off the play field and what I'll do is take a piece of wood, you know, like a six inch, like a two by six or a one by six or whatever you have, you know, it's a block of wood, cut them about the size of the play field and then I just screw them in where those rails are on the back side, like this, see? And just strip the front part of the play field off and then you can mask off these holes and things like that. And then even better, if you'd want to, you just staple a piece of cardboard to the back and now all my pieces are inside, the solenoids, etc. but I don't have to strip all that stuff off. 
Now when I'm done fixing the play field, I can go ahead and take these pieces of wood off. Anything that's here is not going to affect it anyway, because that's just a rail there, you won't see it. And it's just nice that I can take this, lay it on a table, work on it, put it in a corner when I'm done with it. It's just something that helps a little bit to do that, you know. But anyway, this is, this is one that a friend of mine, Holly Jackson, has been working on, a Brida uh, Pinbot. Um, so I've cleared the, fir the first part of the play field here. Now I'm ready to do whatever kind of touch-ups I want to do on it. This actually is white on 99% of pinballs where the lights are in the back. Regardless of what somebody tells you, that was white at one time. Um, that actually helps the, the light, helps the light. It's amazingly brighter when you start doing that. So what, what she's done here is she started out basically um, picking the colors, you know, starting with the colors that she had here. So this used to be a gray that was extremely faded and everything like that. Well, remember, you have now a nice base here. You have your clear on here. And you can actually have a nice surface now to do stuff. Has anybody heard of what's called frisket film? Frisket film is a, uh, it's just a, you can get it at the craft stores and things like that. What it is, is it's just a clear piece of, uh, piece of material. It's like a, uh, it's a masking material is what it is. See, it's just clear. So what you can do is take a piece of frisket. Let's say I'm going to do, I want to do this section here or something, you know. I take a piece of frisket and I cut the section I want. I lay this on here, and now again, now that I have the clear on here, I have a piece of masking material. Let's say I want to, um, I want to, I want to, I want to paint this red here, and I can't seem to get. Just going with something basic here, but you know, I can't do a brush line very well or anything like that. But you know, I've got all these reds, and I want to paint them, so I'll just go ahead and put the frisket on the reds you have here, and then use a very fresh razor blade. Zach do nice or your best friend and just very lightly you can cut out whatever it is you want to paint and then pull that out and then now I have I have all my colors that I want to do mask it off and I use you don't have to get fancy that's for sure a simple airbrush use a gravity feed you have what's, they have what's called gravity feed and they have what's called siphon feed. Siphon feeds pull the paint up here. You're really only using very small pieces of, of, of paint. You're not just putting a little bit in this cup and then you're going to paint that. So, and then I just paint the colors that we did. And that's actually what she did here was she masked off at one point, laid a bunch of that frisket down, cut out all the lines here that she wanted. Mind you, this is a very time consuming process. So <laughs> how much do you like the game? Um, she cut out all the actual colors, and then, and then when we had all the grays laid out, basically masked it off with paper, and then just shot all the colors on it. And now all the grays are done. Huh? You could do it by hand if you wanted to, whatever you do. This is just the methods that I use. I figured out doing a lot of these things, like I said, the whites are so bad, you know, and then I'm not, again, not an artist, so if I start brushing, you can use, like, people have had luck with, like, uh, uh, like what they call flow troll and stuff like that that are like uh, brush con uh, paint conditioners you put them in your paint my problem is typically I get brush strokes it just never looks right I just can't seem to get it right that's maybe my thing what are, you know but yeah if you can paint it perfect by hand whatever works another interesting trick that Tim has taught me and again a great thing about having the uh, the clear coat already on your play field is let's say you are using your brush or your airbrush or whatever it is and you get stuff over the line and it's frustrating you don't know what to do about it but you know what everything else looks perfect but doggone it it went over that line what do I do take a flat toothpick just like that snip the end off and you can either use like a little bit of Windex Tim likes the Windex I have, doesn't really matter either way now that you have this flat surface here, you can go right here and you'd be surprised how precision you can get just shaving that edge off. 
then you can clean your lines up. Just a neat trick that actually works. You, know, you just, <laughs> you know. Um, you'd be surprised how much you can clean up on that when you get that over, over line. Then you get the way you want. Again, the nice thing is once you have the clear on it, whether you brushed it on or sprayed it on, you can just wipe it off if you don't like it. When you get the way you want, then typically after I got quite a few colors, it's in stages, I will go ahead and put another light coat of a clear to lock all that stuff in there. You know, if you start putting your colors on here, I'd be white, and then I go ahead and stick a frisket on the gray, and then I, oh, the gray looks really good, pull it off, and then all of a sudden the white comes off with the gray. Oh, God, that's just a depressing moment <laughs> when you do that, because you gotta start over again. Uh, Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, no problem at all. I use acrylics, I'm sensibly oil based. You're clear because you're clearing it again. Correct. You're just going to lock it back in there. This one actually has a, a, quite a few co coats on here. Uh, that we did it once. I did the, we cleared it. We put the gray down. I think she started doing some of the white. I think I was testing with the white. It's amazing, like I said, seeing the difference between those two. It just pops out. Um, and I think actually there was some, oh, the light blues actually. She started with the light blues and started doing some of those too. So. You're, you haven't had a trouble with your clear separating from the clay field? No, no. Uh -huh. I think when I get these clips about clear down, then you put the paint down, then the paint isn't bonding really well to the clear. Unless you clear rough the, if you rough the clear up, yeah. Well, okay, let me go back on that. Yes, I do give it a scuff, ah, you know. Okay. Uh, with an automotive clear, you you want to yeah you want to scuff it so that you have it, but you know it's just basically I use the 600 grit dual action sander <laughs> real quick you know that's it just gives it a haze, yes, I don't use the brush on so I don't know for sure on that so but yeah I pick the brush on they say you don't need to do that but I'm not sure I, I honestly don't know, um, but yes you are right just give it a quick scuff but it's not going to take the paint off it just you know, just enough to give it give it a tooth to bond to and. To adhere to, correct. Um, uh, I don't know what else. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please, it, it's open for questions. I, I think I've gone over some basics here. I mean, is there is there questions or things people want to know or you're curious about? Uh, color matching, <laughs> using my eyes, <laughs> going, well, I think that looks good. Holly, does that look, you know? Um, <laughs> she's got the eye. Girls have eye, better eyes for color than guys do, okay? You know what? We only see primary colors, red, green, blue, and it's either light blue, dark blue, lightish blue, light purple. Unless it's a car color, then you have cherry red, hot pink. I use an automotive clear. You use the automotive two part clear? Correct, two part clear. So that has the benefit of like the area. Yes, definitely. Outside or something? Definitely. I do it I do it in a garage, but yeah, I open the garage door, respirator, all the precautions you want to take that you need to take, because this stuff is nasty. And have you had any trouble with the clear getting through the gaps in the clay field and then interfering with any surface underneath? No. But again, I mask off these areas here. I have the all the mechanisms under here. Some of the earlier ones I did, some of the first ones I did, yes, I had that, you know, there'd be stuff on the mechanism, but then I'd scrape it off, just normally a piece of metal or something like that. But for color matching, also, just so you know, most of the, most of the colors that are on most of the pens were done by a company called Pantone. And Pantone makes colors for just about everything. And that's kind of the standard that they use. You know, I mean, you're mixing the colors, so they're not perfect. But the Pantone colors, you can use what's called a color wheel. If you buy the Pantone, they're outrageous. The, the, those little wheels and, and swatches are outrageous. Um, I just have a basic one. I think most of them are CMYK, right? Is that correct? Most of them are CMYK? Tim? Yeah. I, I don't really know because I don't understand. Okay. Well, but anyway. You can use a color wheel, mix it, uh, you know, match it up with what, kind of what you have, but really, it, normally I just go to the craft store, I need a light blue, I'll buy like three or four light blues, or, you know, cheap. I will say and that um, most of the colors are Egyptian. Yeah. yeah. Probably the newer 
Uh, grays, definitely, especially the Williams. Those grays are a, a, a bear. And normally it's an, I end up finding, and that's again, you know, sometimes is it easier to try to find that perfect match? Because some people said adding fluorescence to the gray makes it just a little bit better. Um, you know, sometimes you can sit there and match, match, match forever, or it's like, well, it's a big flat surface, I could just get something really close and do it, you know? And that's the way this was actually done. I don't know if, if, I, if I put it next to another bride, you really can't tell. So what do so. you do for the more, uh, you know, for the actual artwork as, as far as this, this flat color is? Interesting thing you asked that. Okay, so let me go over some, some basics of how a play field is actually made. Does anybody really know how they're actually made? Okay, so you have a piece of wood, they have a block of wood, they drill the holes, make all the, all the holes they need to. They had a machine that put the inserts into it, which is a luxury we don't have, and then they would just sand it flat. That's why if you buy inserts, they have a number on them or a letter, and you're like, what the heck? They would, the whole thing would just be sanded flat. And then they would have their screens, soak screens, which look like this, but in a very large scale. This is just a cheapy craft store soak screen kit. And then they would lay that down, and just like you do a t-shirt, they would do each of the colors and line them up. That's actually what, if you look down here, that's what these lines are. That's the registration marks. So they would mark, match up, you know, top and the bottom do the first color. Now they'd always start, most of them, if you look at them, there was always white on the bottom. They would start with the white. It's what they called spot color, uh, spot printing. Yeah. Yeah. So what this, this would just be a yellow, and it may be a little bit further yellow than what it is now. And then they would do the red. And this is a very good tip that Tim actually said. <laughs> the black is the artwork. So in the end, Really, you just have these spots of color, and then once you get the black down, it just makes the whole thing pop out. So it, it's kind of weird when you start thinking about that. You look at this, and there's like a, you know, a ball mark cut this off, and there's a little divot in there. If you just actually touch that up, all of a sudden, it's just like it just comes out. Wow, I don't need to do that much. <laughs> you know, Because the black really, he's, he's actually right, the black does make the artwork. So. Um, so anyway, what you're asking there, like I said, they do spot color. So if you kind of think of that option, uh, that, that way, if I have like a gray and there's a bunch of detail in here, you can, they make, I'm not necessarily a fan of them, but some people make insert decals where you can put them on there. I've had more problems with that. They tend to lift or do weird things when you get the clear coat on there. They don't seem to hold up as well. Um, you can just repaint them on there if you can by hand. I found if you're computer savvy, you can make silk screens. Um, there is actually a company called Circuit Bridge, I think it's circuit-bridge.com. They make uh, what they call photo pre-emulsified silk screens. And you can just buy them in eight and a half by 11 sheets or bigger sheets than that. You can buy them in little squares, which is perfect for a play field. So actually, Circuit Bridge, yeah. Look up Circuit Bridge. Let's see if I can. I'm trying to find something basic here that that I had that I could show. I know this shuttle down here is one of them. I'll tell you what, I'll, if you don't mind looking a little upside down here. A good example would be the shuttle right here. It's very faded. There's really only two colors on this if you look at it. There's, oh, there's a gray there, but just basically, you know, really this would, when this was printed out, it would just be a big white blob. That's really all it would be. So I would actually paint this white blob out. Now what I do silkscreen wise is I'll get the fine silk screens like that from Circuit Bridge. Um, if you use like um, some graphics programs, you can actually just scan it in here. Um, and then just basically use that black artwork Print it out onto a piece of, uh, of clear um, transparency, like to a clear transparency. And then you just basically put that onto the, to the silk screen material that has the photo stuff on it. And once you expose it to light for a few minutes, then what you can do is just rinse that off and whatever the light doesn't hit falls off. So now you have a little silk screen that's the same way as the way they did it. And you can actually just put your black artwork down there and it looks good. So your method basically is to is to use that brisket film for doing all of your non-black colors as background. Yep, the and basic then, spot colors, yep. And then screen the black on top. And then do the black, yep. 
because then once you have the base colors down, again, like if you think the, the black does the artwork, get your colors cleaned up on your spot, your, your spot areas, and then you can go through and do your details. And it, it really comes together pretty quick. Have you tried the water slide? I've tried water slide decals. I had a hard time with that. I can tell you a brief story about my hell. <laughs> If I had pictures, I wish I could show you. But anyway, that's where all this journey came into play was uh, uh, I had a creature from the Black Lagoon that somebody had brought over. And, uh, you know, things don't always go right. But the idea was this machine was absolutely filthy. Um, the idea was, hey, clean it up, give her a nice clear coat, make her look good. She's going to be beat up really good. So let's make sure everything's good. All right, no problem. So we strip the play field down, everything's fine. Well, getting down to the point of where you strip down the play field, you can't have the mylar on here, you know, to do that. You want to get the mylar off. So normally, very good methods that I've found is free spray. Free spray does mylar beautifully. You will go through three, four cans of free spray, but I would rather do that than lose artwork. And slowly but surely, you just freeze that mylar and get it off of there. Well, somebody had put, um, like a shelf paper on there. It was not, it was clear plastic, but it was not mylar. It slapped that on the play field. And then, I'm not done yet, they took a razor blade and started cutting the areas they wanted. So there's grooves in the play field where the razor blade was. And of course, over time, you could tell because it was black dirt ingrained in the wood. Trying to pull this up was a nightmare. It was basically, free spray wouldn't work, it would pull and it would tack, and it would pull and it would tack, and oh, it just would not work. I tried um, all kinds of citrus, I, I, there's all kinds of stuff. I tried everything under the sun and this doggone goo gone, it just would not stay. The nice thing about the freeze is when you hit it, it separates the, it leaves the glue down, separates it, but then just, it comes right up, you know, and these inserts don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of meat to them, really, when they, when they put, that, put that artwork on top of that insert, you know. So uh, actually what happened was, if you were familiar with the artwork of uh, a creature from the Black Lagoon, right in front of the flippers in the middle there, there's a big hand that says, free pass. Well, guess what? That tack hit it, ripped off half the insert, all the artwork. Oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> this is just, it was a good play field. Everything looked good. I tried everything, touching it up with brushes, trying to draw it on there. I did actually decals. I did uh, water slide decals. Well, it looked great. Get it on there. It kind of looks okay. The problem with the water slide decals is actually you have white underneath there. If you look at the bottom of your inserts when you lift it up, if you see white down there, well, there's supposed to be white there for the light to not transfer. So, you know. um, so anyway, there was white in certain spots and not others, and it never looked right. Or you get the water slide decal in there, it looked okay, but then I'd clear it and try to be really careful with it, but then all of a sudden, after a couple days, that decal would start to, as it would hit, it would start, you know, curling a little bit. Oh, I can't do this. Sand it, take it off, clean it up. And actually what I ended up doing, what, what I ended up doing was a long journey of basically taking, I took a silk screen, <laughs> many silk screens, and this is actually one of the ones I did. And uh, I made, I'd scanned the, I had a creature decal of the free pass. I scanned that in there into the computer. I separated and made four distinct colors and made four separate six, six screens for each one of them. It was like just a spot in a spot that was pink. So I'm just doing this little bitty spot here. And actually did each of the individual colors and went back to the same way they did it and silk screened each color on. Started with a white, started with a yellow, went back, you know, let it dry and did a little bit of pink, and then turned around, and in the very end, it's funny, it just looks like, it looked like garbage. It was just a bunch of blobs. And then in the end, when you put that black down, it just popped out, so. Are you so. using the same acrylic inks for the screen? I was using um, just uh, silk screening, which is, I think it's, yeah, I think most of those, they, they wash off, a little, they're still water-based, so they gotta be some kind of acrylic, but they're real pasty and it's like, that are real thick, yeah. just blob and slide on there. So, um. no, we'll just see more about five minutes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or anything they'd like to know or? What kind of auto clear did you use? Where did you get it? What kind of gun did you use? Ah, uh, okay. Well, I'm. If you can tell us about, you know, if we sure. Wanna, if we're going to do it the first time, what did you learn from your mistakes? You 
don't need to buy the most expensive thing out there. I, I do all my clear coating with a cheapy Home, Home Depot HVLP gun, and I have a small compressor that does the job. The nice thing is, you know, if anybody's done cars, you need a lot of, a lot of air to do something as big as a car. This is a small play field, so you don't need to have a beefy compressor. I'm using actually a small portable compressor I use for construction stuff, for nail guns and things like that. I'm using a cheap gravity feed HVLP gun, same as that is. It has, you know, the cups on the top. You don't need a whole lot there to do that. Um, and uh, the, the, the clear, I, I didn't buy like the expensive PPG or anything. Uh, Wesco body paint, auto paint and supply. You can walk into them and get it. Um, I actually used, uh, well, I tried a couple of them, but I ended up basically using what they had recommended. It was, it was like the middle of the road of what they had. I think it was called EuroClear it is. It does the job just fine, and it's, it's durable, you know. It's uh, UV resistant, so. Uh, as to tips after that, when you have the gun, follow the instructions specifically on that. It, it, you know, it's a two to one mixture, and you'll have a, they'll give you a little mixing cup that you can get and mix it to the T of what it is. I mean, they've designed that. So for that, for that, you know, there's a reason they tell you to do that. Mix it just right. And uh, gun-wise, if you did, if you, what they say rule of thumb, use about uh, two and a half turns on the actual volume. You know, follow that guideline there and then just kind of work it until you figure it out. You have to kind of play with the gun a bit till you do it. One of the nice things about doing something like this, don't be afraid of it because a beautiful thing about clear coat, you get a run, you get a drip, you get a sag, you get it wrong, you don't like it, it looks like garbage. So what? Sand it, start over again. It's not going to hurt it. Do you, you know? the play field flat? Or I shoot them flat. And how long do you shoot the clear coat? Uh, the stuff I use, they say most of the automotive clears, they're in three stages. You, 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 shoot, the first coat, you shoot the first coat, you give it a pack of about 10 to 15 minutes, which is kind of weird. You shoot it, walk away, take the mask, go, go outside, you know? And then, uh, and then you come back after it's, it's flashed, is what they call that, and basically it's just all the gases have come out of it. And then you shoot down two heavier coats on it. And so, is that all you put, or do you have any coat? Huh? Is it just the first two coats, or do you have any coat? I, no, I, you do it in one session. If you're, if, you're, if you're painting it, sanding it, painting it, sanding it, the only time you need to sand is if you let it dry too long. And that's what they say on there. If, if it's over eight hours, then you need to go ahead and give it the scuff like the like gentleman over here had said. Um, if you're doing it in the, in the one, two, three sessions, no, there's no reason to. But yeah, I'll do three to, three to four, typically three coats. You know, That's more than enough for a play field. It's nice and thick. You don't want too much. And then, then you've got this blob, and it's hard to put back together. And, there's really no reason for that. They'll, they'll hold up for a long time. And just like, again, the nice thing about the automotive clears, I don't know how the uh, brush on, he's a brush on guy, but he does different pinballs. Huh? Not strictly brush on. That's part of the fun. But uh, once you're done there, it's just like taking care of a car. You, you wax it, wash it, you know. Yeah. Get to where you know your material. I did that. And then you can shoot your real game and you don't have to worry about it. Correct. But that will save you a lot of money. Yeah. Just don't be afraid of it. That, that's yeah, that's the biggest thing. I, well, I can, I can say that I did that. What I, the first thing I had to do was somebody asked me to do a cabinet when I had a setup. And I was like, oh. And, uh, you know, I took a piece of wood and I spray painted a bunch of stuff on there. And I, took the, I just made some lines and just kind of did something. And then I started playing with the gun. Yeah, it was, it was garbage at first. But you know, once I got it, and like I said, the nice thing is, if you do mess up, it's not a big deal. You know, I had one time that I was, actually, this was one of them here. As a matter of fact, it was my gun died on me, and it was leaking on the top. I didn't have the top on, and I'm sitting there shooting it, and <laughs> it's dripping all over it. No, well, just, okay, sand it, just sand it down smooth again, and then do it again. That's it. So, is there any other questions or? Oh, sir, sorry. Without the plastic, without the white plastic, so you can basically take that out. And take that out? No, I haven't had any problems with it. Just sort of mania that way. Yeah. You might have to cut, uh, 
Yeah. You may have to, yeah. Right one, you may have to shave just the edges off there, but yeah, that's, that's how CPR did the ones they did too. So, yeah, they. Thank you. Thank you.